Hey everybody, happy Monday. Today, in light of COVID-19 coronavirus chatter, I really wanted to talk with you about ways that we can better manage and hopefully lower our panic response. And I talked about this last week a little bit with regard to fight, flight, freeze and what that really is. But if you haven't seen that video, what fight, flight and freeze is, is really a way for our body and brain to keep us alive. Our brain is always seeking out threat to find it so that we can either run from it, fight it, or if there's no option, we can find ourselves in a freeze state. And being in fight, flight and freeze makes us a lot more reactive, obviously. It makes us impulsive, right? If we're gonna run away, we have to do it quickly. We don't have time to think about it. And so it can narrow our vision and overall make us really bad at making decisions, but really good at running from a threat. Also, our stress response puts us right into emotional mind instead of our wise mind. And our wise mind, I like to call kind of like our adult or you know quality of thought, taking time with decisions mind, because I know being an adult doesn't necessarily mean that we're doing all those things. However, being in a stress response puts us into the emotional mind where we're run by impulse and quick thoughts, and we don't really take the time to make thoughtful non-reactive, more responsive decisions. And we really need to be into that wise mind when we have a lot of variables and possible outcomes. Like with the coronavirus, we don't have a lot of information. We're not really sure. There's too many variables. And so we need to be in our wise mind in order to make thoughtful and helpful decisions about it. And I believe that this struggle, we're in fight, flight, freeze, our brain is like really emotional. We have all these variables. There's so much information we find ourselves in a sense of panic. And if we find ourselves in this stress response or a sense of panic for an extended period of time, it can lead to all sorts of mental health issues from increased symptoms of stress, anxiety, panic attacks, depression, thoughts of suicide, and many, many more. And that's why it's really important that we talk about ways we can calm our systems down, self-soothe, and just find some solace in this very chaotic time. And my first tip is to shake it off. I know that sounds really crazy, but if you remember way back to my videos with my good friend, Dr. Alexa Altman, she talked about a type of therapy called somatic experiencing. And I'll link the video in the description if you wanna watch that. But if you don't remember, Psychologist Peter Levine created this type of therapy. He saw animals in the wild running from a threat. Let's say a bear is about to eat me and I'm a mouse. I run and once I've reached a place of safety, I do a full body shake as a way to regulate my system or to bring it back to like my regular baseline. So moving our bodies can actually help us shake off the dysregulation we may be feeling. Now I know everyone's body is different, so do what you can. Maybe you do a quick stretch or a short yoga practice. I love yoga with Adrienne, she's on YouTube too, you can check her out. Or maybe you do a more intensive workout. Whatever you can do to move your body a little bit can help our nervous system regulate itself and calm us down. Now one of the reasons that somatic experiencing works so well is because we build up these resources to help us continue to calm our system down, you know, because life throws a lot of things at us. So along with moving our bodies, we need to have other ways to tap in and calm down. And one resource that can help is recognizing what it is we're feeling. Sure, it's easy to be like, I'm super anxious or really feeling stressed out right now, but take some time during your day to dig into what it is you're feeling. Are you feeling sad? Because I don't know about you, but I've been sad off and on because I worry so much about other people, how they're doing, are they coping, are they healthy, are they safe? Maybe you're feeling angry, or possibly tomorrow you'll be feeling weary due to all of this. Taking the time to tap in and be more mindful of how we are feeling helps us not only notice what's going on inside our minds, but it also gives us an opportunity to process it instead of just stuffing it down. By simply noting the emotion and then using it in a sentence or thinking about maybe what triggered that emotion, it can help us feel so much better. So give it a try and let's just start by trying to come up with one emotion a day. 
and we'll work towards coming up with three to five of them, you know, after we kind of get the hang of it. And next, let's make time for meaningful conversations with those that we're closest to. If friends and family are not safe, it's okay for this to be your therapist or online friends. As I mentioned in my other COVID-19 video, the antidote to this constant state of panic and stress is to connect socially. Since we can't meet up with everyone in person, it's still important to set aside time to connect, whether that's through Skype, Zoom, FaceTime, or whatever you have. Make time to talk with others. It not only reminds us that we're not alone, but also lets us vent about how we feel and hopefully laugh when we can. My next tip is to allow yourself to grieve. Grieve the loss of events that were canceled and how life used to be. I know many of you have let me know that you've had to cancel your weddings, family reunions, milestone birthday parties, dream vacations, and much, much more. Also, I know many of you have lost loved ones to COVID-19 or have personally been harmed by it. It's important to acknowledge our losses and feel how we need to feel about it. We can't just pretend it's life as usual when it doesn't feel that way at all. It's okay to be sad, mad, and even mentally, you know, trying to bargain for things to change. So give yourself the time. Grieve. Feel it. It's a hard, difficult situation that we're in. And my next tip, distract. Sometimes we just can't think, process, or deal. Instead of letting that spiral us into a dark place, distract with healthy coping skills and new hobbies. These could be things like organizing a part of your home, playing a game, coloring, calling a friend, watching funny animals on TikTok or Instagram. I love that. Or really anything that isn't self-destructive and it gets you to think about something other than COVID-19. And I know that you all have a lot of other distraction techniques to share, so please feel free to leave those in the comments down below. You never know who you could help. And my next tip, and something that I'm personally working on, having healthy boundaries. Now I know this sounds really weird and this was like a last minute add into this video because I realized it this morning that I'm taking on the burden of other people. Meaning I'm worried about Sura, my lady who does my hair because I don't know how she's doing financially. I'm worried about my friends who work at restaurants and are hourly workers who've been laid off. I'm, I'm worried about my mom and if she's gonna come down with COVID-19 because she was in Mexico for two weeks. I'm worried. And that worry and that preoccupation with other people in their situations has been, it's been so draining. And so what I would encourage you to do, what I'm going to try to do is when those thoughts pop up, I'm worried. What if, I wonder how they are. I should check in. I should check in. <sighs> I'm going to breathe. I'm going to use some thought stopping techniques and I'm going to do something else. I'm going to distract because that only takes energy from us. And at a time when we can feel so depleted, we really just need to know that we can check in with people when we can, when we have the energy, and it's okay to just focus on ourselves just for a minute. The best thing we can all do is just stay home and tap in. And my final tip, see a therapist. If you're feeling hopeless, helpless, or feel that the anxiety of what's going on is making it impossible for you to do anything during the day, please reach out for help. I know we can't go and see a therapist in person right now, but thanks to technology, we have so many other ways to receive the help we so desperately need and deserve. So check out resources like BetterHelp, Talkspace, or even just Crisis Text Line for more support in the moment. And if you don't know, Crisis Text Line is 741-741. You can just text, howdy, hello, help me, whatever. They have people there 24 seven. They are not professionals, they're not therapists, but they are trained crisis counselors. If you are currently seeing a therapist, email them and see when they have time for a Skype or phone session. We need professional help more than ever right now. So don't wait. The sooner we reach out, the sooner we can start feeling better. I know this is a really difficult time for all of us. And I hope you don't think this video is in any way minimizing what you may be going through. Instead, I hope it offers some insight into how we can manage all that we feel and overcome this time of panic. Thank you so much for watching. Please take care of yourself. Stay home and I will see you next time. Bye.